on today's episode, shitting on shitty neighbors. Don't let unpaid credits ruin your credit. And quiet, this is a podcast. All that and more on today's episode of Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Help me out, almighty Lori Beth Denberg. Give me the vital information so I get the red thoughts to do, yeah. Church of Lori Beth is in session and we're reading from the scriptures of battle information. Talking my God is my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Oh my God is my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Lori Beth Dunberg, and welcome to the Bad Advice Podcast. With me, as always, is Clark Crozer. Hello. Hello, Clark. How are you? I would like to wish you a very happy Hanukkah. Oh, thank you. I'd like to wish you a very happy Hanukkah, too. Welcome to Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah time. The holiday with the most spellings (laughs) of all the religions. It's the most misspelled holiday (laughs) in the world. I mean, we've got Christmas and Xmas. Yeah. Those are two. You know, one is a a shortened abbreviation. Yeah. Hanukkah. I wish there were more things that you could just replace with the letter X. Yes. That's what Hanukkah is missing. If you could replace the first Hanuk with an X and it was just X ka, nobody would misspell it. (laughs) Remember we wrote that thing a long time ago and our favorite joke was it was uh, LAX. We were the characters were in Los Angeles International Airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so but it's called LAX. And before that, I didn't know that when they started the airport codes, X was used As when a city didn't have like M-I-N, Minnesota. Right. You know, LA, it didn't have another one. So they right. put an X, the same with Phoenix. It's right. PHX. Right. So, but uh, the joke at the time, 20 years ago, was <laughs> the announcer going, welcome to LAX, where the X stands for International Airport. <laughs> It just made us laugh for that. a million. But anyway. That was a funny joke. The holidays have started. Yay. I mean, we got through Thanksgiving. Hanukkah yeah, is here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, tell me your favorite Hanukkah story. <laughs> Clark doesn't quite, no. doesn't you know, quite one, have them. One year, because my mom is Jewish. Yes. There was one year that we tried to do both. Ah. The problem is my mom has a bit of a spending problem Uh and she really likes buying lots and lots and lots of things she does when i was a kid and it was christmas time was fantastic but hanukkah you're limited you only get eight days and each day you're only supposed to get one present so yes i don't think uh that's the part that uh that broke her she just didn't that was too short of a time yes if you could give one present every day for all of december maybe she would have gone for it but yes but she but then you can just do one big kapow on exactly. christmas exactly it's endless endless literally and now you know i'm not the one being spoiled now my son is the one yes. being spoiled. So literally Christmas morning is like a four or five hour ordeal <laughs> of just constant unwrap. Oh, let's, oh that's amazing. Ooh. Let's go to another one. Oh, Lex has to take one. a breather. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. give, me, uh, give me 10, Mimi. I, I just need a breather. <laughs> He's outside smoking. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. How long is this going to go on? <laughs> He needs a belt of whiskey. (laughs) But so, yeah, it's Hanukkah. The holidays are here. Christmas is coming up, which is fraught. Yes. Fraught with stuff, with anxiety, anxiety, family, weather for some people. Um, So if you need help getting through it, let us know. That's right. Do you need help getting to your family, getting away from your family? (laughs) Yeah. Do you need help figuring out who to invite? Do you need help picking out presents? Yeah, exactly. Is something better or worse? Oh, God. Can I tell you something? Wait, before we go on. Yes. Speaking of presents, I'll I'll have a present that you shouldn't get, at least Lex. I would hope (laughs) most kids, but 
uh, Lex, I was so funny. I was cleaning out. I've been doing a big cleanup of all the like old toys and bins of old stuff that I've had uh-huh. just up in the attic. Oh, they were at, they were at your parents' house, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So I've been going through all of my old stuff, all of my old toys, and I've cleaning them out and organizing them. And I have a big pile of transformers. And on the top of that pile is a handgun. What? Well, because it's Megatron. Megatron in the very original version of the Transformers, okay. the lead bad guy, the lead good guy turned into a tanker trunk. Yes. Tanker truck, excuse me. Like a big- Optimus Prime? Optimus Prime was like a big eight wheeler, 10 wheeler, 15 wheeler, whatever it was, a yeah. big giant truck. Megatron, the bad guy, turned into a handgun. Whoa. Which that never made sense to me. Like, why wouldn't Optimus Prime just run over Megatron? <laughs> like, Megatron must be sm- so small if he transforms into a gun. Like, scissors beats paper. Exactly. 18 wheeler beats handgun. Gun. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so there, the handgun was, uh, he was in handgun form. Okay. And he was just sitting on the, the coffee table, and my son. Walked over and was like having a good day. It was like, hey, what's going on? And he walks over and he goes, so yeah. Dada, what is that? And I'm like, what? He goes, what is that? And he's like stepping back, stepping away. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh so this, he goes, that is, that's not a gun. And I went, no, 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 it's not a gun. It's a transformer. And he oh. goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Dude. Well, so then I transformed it in front of him and showed him. But He's like, we did active shooter drills at school. <laughs> exactly. I didn't know I had to come home to it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so great slash interesting yeah. slash whatever that that was his reaction. Right? Yeah, exactly. He's exactly. like, I, I, I behaved at school today, Dada. I, I was good. Don't you think I'm good? <laughs> I oh just thought God. you'd like, yeah. So, yeah, apparently don't. But that's from like the 80s. Yeah, that was from oh, okay. early 80s. They so, would never make a. Uh, yeah, they couldn't make a toy gun like that anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. realistic looking. So don't buy that for your kids at Christmas. <laughs> yes. If you want to write in that question, the answer already is no. So you don't have to bother writing that question. You do have uh, any Christmas questions out there. You want to know what to buy for your six year old. We know what yes. to do. We know all the answers, so just Christmas send us the or, questions. Or New Year's. Or New Year's, that's true. New Year's is always a Te- heart pounder for me. Technically, my wife's birthday is January 5th, so her birthday, too. Ah. We're going to throw that in. If you have questions about her birthday, <laughs> we will answer all of them. What's her sign? Are we compatible? <laughs> Says the creepiest question asker ever. <laughs> Uh, okay well we're gonna get to that in the next few weeks uh but for today before we go too far i think we should start helping out some people okay and Lori beth i have some really good news oh we've already helped people okay we actually our first question isn't really a question it's a follow-up from who we've got a follow-up from our good friend adam Adam, if you don't remember, wrote to us a while ago uh, asking us some questions because he was scared that he had to go in to do some tests and he found out that he had cancer. Of course, I remember. I remember. Yeah. So he has uh, written us again. Oh, gosh. Given us a follow up. Okay. And I'd love to tell I'm, you. And I'm kind of excited to hear it because your chipper voice leads me to believe it's, <laughs> it's good not, news. Not going to end with, and that's why I'm about to die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tell me. So here we go. Uh, Adam says Hi, Lori, Beth, and Clark. At the beginning of the summer, I called into the show to ask for advice about uncertainty and the task of waiting for the unknown to become known in time. I was having a tumor removed from my chest and feared it could be cancer. Well, to my surprise, it was cancer. I called back into the show to give you and the audience an update that I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and would be undergoing chemotherapy. After eight grueling chemo treatments, nausea, hair loss, weekly visits to the ER, fists full of pills, and the occasional emotional breakdowns, I'm writing to say that I just celebrated my 32nd birthday a week after my last chemo treatment this past October. 
I have also received the news from my oncologist that my body scan results indicate that I am cancer free. Dude. Wow, that feels good to write. You mentioned something in response to my second call to the show. You said, you're 31 years old. You have so much life to live for. I heard you say that while en route to my chemo appointment and cried in the cab in silence. Thank you for picking me up when I was feeling my weakest. I love you guys and have been listening every week with love and strength. Adam, 32, New York City, Survivor. That was Adam. Yeah. Whoa. Right. Adam, if you're listening to this, you're the best and you're strong and I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And thanks for letting us know all the stuff. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Right. Like, well, when we started this show, we were kind of expecting like goofy right. smart questions. Or, <laughs> like on the first episode, yeah. it was somebody who like couldn't poop in public. Right. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and then we started to get more, you know. Deep questions. Deep, personal, personal questions. And like to hear from someone like Adam, who's, who's saying he went through this whole thing and that we helped him is, yeah. is better than any poop question. <laughs> We could have ever gotten. Adam, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Anyone I'm... else who's out there going, I'm sick and what do I do? Yep. Here's an example of someone who fought through it. And yep. this was a good, you know, a good outcome. Yeah. But whatever, he didn't know that. You know, Adam <laughs> was like, I'm just going to do what I need to do. Yeah. And that's amazing. Man, Man, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam, for making me feel good. (laughs) It's just really great. It's that's amazing. Congratulations. And thank you. But um, I don't want to spend too much time on Adam because we do have a lot of people with real personal. okay, Personal, like deep philosophical problems that we need to get to. Uh, so let's move on to Bobby. Okay. Uh, and Bobby wrote us, and uh, he, he has a very personal request. Uh, he goes, uh, hello, I'm having problems with a neighbor letting their dog shit in our yard. <laughs> I let it go for a long time, but now I am tired of scooping another dog's shit. Should I start throwing it over the fence? Maybe put it on their porch. I'm shy and I don't like conflict. So talking to them is the absolute last resort. But what should I do? Thank you so much, Bobby. I know that was (laughs) probably hard to even type out. Was this the eighth version of it? This is the questions I was expecting to get. (sighs) It is nice to get a mix, though. Yeah, exactly. It's not like I don't want poop questions. No, I want both. I do. I didn't know I wanted both, but yeah. now I know I'd like both. You can have your poop and eat it too. <laughs> All right, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> um, you ha- don't say if you've ever talked to your neighbor before. Yeah, no. And you don't say whether he just lets the dog out or if he walks it past your yard right. to shit. Um. If you have never spoken to your neighbor about this before, Mm -hmm. you need to do that. Yeah. And talking to them is a last resort because you don't want confrontation. You can use this opportunity to stick your toe into confrontation. Mm. If you keep sticking your toes into (laughs) someone else's dog shit. Exactly. Um, yeah, because it's if your excuse is, well, I don't want to talk to anybody, it's like, well, then you're never going to get anything. And I really, really have found out through personal experience, through other people's experience, that it is much better to go to your neighbor and say, hey, can I talk to you? Something's bothering me. Right. Rather than write the note and put it on the door right. or something. Because then it's like, well, why don't you just come talk to me? Absolutely. I don't hate the idea of collecting it. And leaving it, and on, leaving the, it on the porch. That's not bad. And saying like, I think you left this at my house. <laughs> uh, another, another horrible thing to do would yes. be like, 
yeah, I, I got your dog's poop tested and they have this horrible disease. <laughs> and then you get them to spend $5,000 on tests. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, that wasn't true. Get your dog shit off my lawn. Or, or we were just talking about the first episode with people talking about pooping in public. Uh, um, maybe Bobby should just start pooping uh, on his neighbor's lawn. He should. Squat right? there with the paper open in the morning. I mean, if there's anything worse than a dog pooping on your lawn, it's a human pooping on your lawn. Yeah, that was that's more distressing. <laughs> but here's here's my other thing, too, is. Would it bother you if the dog pooped on your lawn if your neighbor picked it up? Right. Because I could see me. I mean, whenever I meet a dog and the dog jumps on me or does something, they're like, oh, no, sorry, sorry. You know, a dog will jump on me all the time. Right. I say after they say they're sorry, I go, hey, I'm not in this to stay clean. <laughs> or like your dog chose to do this. I'm like, well, he chose to do it to the right person. Right. because I'm giving him kisses. <laughs> so for me, it wouldn't bother me if the dog pooped on my lawn if they picked it up. Right. So that's a different scenario. Absolutely. You know, I, to say even, yeah, I don't, you know, it's not really a problem if you would just pick it up. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, my kid is stepping in it or it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, but that's, you know, that could be a way to bridge the gap between neighbor hating and dog lover. Also, let me throw this out here. Imagine this scenario. Okay. Your your neighbor's walking across your lawn with his dog. Mm -hmm. Dog goes and poops. When your neighbor who is walking that dog turns and looks at the house, sees you standing on the porch with a cup <laughs> of coffee, just watching them. Don't say anything. Just watch them. And then if he doesn't go pick up the poop, just give him a little. <clears throat> Right. What I like about that is now we've got Bobby completely in like psychotic break paranoia. <laughs> He's quit his job. He hasn't spoken to his family in months. Just staring he out the just window. Stares out the window. Waiting for that waiting, dog. Waiting for poop. <laughs> Such a downward, you know, and then we get a letter like, my neighbor keeps staring at me. <laughs> Maybe we can bring these two together. Right? Um, you have to talk to your neighbor, yeah. Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, what does he say about talking? It's in the last resort. So, uh, Bobby says, I'm shy and don't like conflict. So talking to them is last resort. But honestly, I don't think this has to be conflict necessarily. No, it's, you. It, it's, well, you, you've got a good point going in, yeah. you know, and whether it's conflict has to do with how you present it. Right. But you're shy and you don't like conflict. People that sit in that get treated like shit. No pun intended. Yeah. And if you need to um, speak up for yourself mm -hmm. because your lawn is getting violated because yeah. you're feeling taken advantage of all of that stuff. You don't have to sit with that. If yeah. you can just step outside, take a step literally next door mm -hmm. and say, Hey, can I just talk to you about your dog poop? Right. It's uh, you know, all over. Oh, and I'm, when, you, when you, I'm tasking you, yeah, Bobby, yeah. with going over to talk to them, yeah. refer to it as poop not shit. <laughs> yes, that would help. Just because that's a nicer way around it. Right. Um, and Bobby also doesn't say if he likes dogs or not. Yeah. But I have a feeling he has a good heart. Yeah. And that he likes dogs. I agree. I agree. All right, Bobby. You, you got, you're, you have assignment. You have, your assignment is to stand up for yourself and not let your fear. Or shyness. Or shyness keep you feeling like you've getting shit on. All right. Hopefully that helps, Bobby. Uh, we're going to move on to our next question. And our next question comes from an oldie but a goodie. Uh -oh. One of our good friends, Mr. A.J. Cappuccino. Oh. And A.J. Cappuccino writes, Hello, it's A.J. for the fourth time as an employee at, an, at a university. I have a tuition waiver and I utilized it to take an online class. But then... I was surprised to find a $25 per credit fee for the class being online. 
That's right. It costs more to take a class online. I was pissed, but I also took another one after knowing that there would be the fee. It's been a couple of years and I still haven't paid it. And I have no intentions of getting a degree. I just wanted to take those classes. Should I pay the money? Will it screw up my credit if I don't? Thank you. That's All right. AJ. AJ Cappuccino. Yep. To, to recap for the listeners. <laughs> yes. AJ Cappuccino, your last message to us yeah. was about you accidentally kept your friend's expensive calculator. Oh, right. And should you reimburse her because right. she bought a new one and then you found it. So we're going to just do a blanket <laughs> so that AJ doesn't have to write back about this kind of stuff for anymore. For the future, yeah. Pay what you owe. <laughs> Obviously, these things are in the back of your mind, buzzing around. <laughs> There's small amounts of money. Yep. If there's a thousand small amounts of money, <laughs> you might have to prioritize yeah, and take exactly. them one at a time. <laughs> you can pay for the classes. If that's not possible, maybe you can pay toward a like scholarship program or something mm. else at the school. Yeah. yeah Although yeah, I'm yeah. sure the school will take your money unless it's like burned down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> AJ, dude. Yeah. If something's bothering you this much, yeah. you take care of it. Yeah. Because you clearly in your questions to us are a good person who wants to do the right thing. That's right. You don't have to have my approval. <laughs> To do it. That's a good point. Or if you do, this is a blanket statement. <laughs> if overdue library books, go back and return them. There you go. I had a library book one. I think it, it was a um it was a series of unfortunate events one. Oh yeah, let me snick it. PS and by the way are fucking awesome books. Oh yeah, yeah. They're yeah. so good. Yeah. And they teach I mean, just read them with your children. Okay. <laughs> Not too young though. They're kind right. of dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Did you watch the the movie with Jim Carrey? I love the movie with oh, okay. Jim Carrey. Just making sure. That's why I you read the book. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love that movie. I nice. haven't seen all of the Neil Patrick Harris one. Right. But the point of that was I had it forever. Okay. This book. Right. Late for the library, like like months. Oh no. I was like, I can't take this back now. I'm going to get judged. I'm going to get, you know, right. all this stuff and right. the money and all of this stuff. I finally just took it back one day and she was like, oh, and it was like $2.14. <laughs> but I had been thinking about it since the day after it, you know, was due. Right. Return the books, pay the fee, pay the fee. Call up about the, because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a small amount of money, but if it's hanging out there and it's a debt and they yeah. send it to collections, yeah. it could affect your credit. It very well could. So let's see, what else could he need to pay for? <laughs> uh, if you owe the neighbor kid $10 for mowing your lawn. <laughs> Did you rent your tux when you got married? Yes. Maybe they, <laughs> they need their deposit. Whatever you've got going on. Yeah. Make a list. Yeah. Tick them off one at a time as you make things right. Yeah. Because whatever anxiety you're feeling about this yeah. dissipates when, I, you've, when you've made it right. I love the idea of making AJ Cappuccino into basically the next My Name is Earl. <laughs> where he's just spending all of his time making up for, uh, you know, past mistakes and paying off debts and... You know, I think we need to have a like when anybody now does something like this, we'll be like, I, I just got to cap this off. <laughs> we'll just name it after Mr. Exactly. Cappuccino. Mr. Cappuccino. <sighs> just get it done, AJ. Yeah. Go you on gotta, with your life. You got to do what you got to do, my friend. Yes. Um, hopefully that helps AJ Cappuccino. And if it doesn't, I'm sure we will hear back from you about... <laughs> Plenty of other different debts and uh, things that you owe other people. Uh, and we will be happy to help you out then as well. Yes. Um, but let's move on. We are uh, we are done with the body section of our uh, questions. Okay. And it's time 
to move to our rotating segment of the oh. week. And this is going to be an exciting one for all of our fans because it's our new favorite character assassination. That's my time, everybody. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Today's been great. Thank you. Character assassination. So, yes, this is... Uh, deep dive into my character, as much as you love me for all the different reasons, dear right, listeners. Right. As long as you were hanging on my every word for <laughs> advice to live your life to the fullest, I'm that girl from all that. And that's probably why you're <laughs> that's true. downloading this downloady. <laughs> so um gonna go, you know, I get questions all the time. Yeah. What was your favorite character on all that? Right. And I would say the loud librarian, mm. except it is so hard to yeah. do. It is the most physically demanding, emotionally yeah. draining. Yeah. Like in every single way. Yeah. It's very cathartic. We'll get into some. Well, let's. We can, well, yeah. Why don't we yeah, listen to a couple of clips a so that people can understand who we're talking about when we talk about the loud librarian? Quiet! This is a library! Hey, 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 hey! Quit laughing! This is a library, not a chuckle hut! Okay, so. So, yeah. If you didn't know before, <laughs> now you've got the gist. Yes. It's the irony. She's a librarian who's loud. I, I, oh, I get it. Also, now I get it. Also. Yes. She doesn't want you to be loud. Oh, okay. it's a double irony. I love it. And the loud it. librarian's name is Mrs. Hushbaum. Hushbaum. So, wait, did she have a first name? I don't believe so. Oh, no. Okay. And it didn't occur to me till we did the reboot. Yeah. That her name was Mrs. Hushbaum. Oh, so who that did she marry? A Mr. Hushbaum who is her husband. Wow. And. How ironic is it that his name was, was Hushbaum? Hushbaum. <laughs> so there's that. There's all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to say, though, okay, the loud librarian, her name is Mrs. Hushbaum. Yeah. They just did on, I think, like, The Ringer, which mm. is a website thingy. Okay. Like, a ranking of all people got to vote. This character, uh, what's it called? A bracket. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This character or this character, and then one moved on. I was eliminated. Oh, they were doing, were they doing a bracket of they, all that characters? Of, of Nickelodeon characters. Nickelodeon Sorry. Nickelodeon characters. I forgot to explain no, the point. No, no, that's okay. So it was Loud Librarian was the one of me that they chose. Okay. And I was eliminated like immediately by a character I didn't even know. And it was like a landslide. What? I think part of it, I mean, because my ego says there's yeah. no way that was possible. Yeah, yeah. They called the character Mrs. Hushbaum uh, and not the loud, loud librarian. librarian. And I think that worked against her yes. in, in the scheme of things. Who was it, the character that beat you? Oh, I don't even know. I think it was an animated character from a show. It wasn't something I was even really familiar with. Weird. So if you're out there, <laughs> watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, so yes, her name is Mrs. Hushbaum. I always just refer to her as the loud librarian. Yeah. And it took a while. I think it was like maybe season three of all that out of the f out of the four that I did. Yeah. Season two or three that this character came along. Okay. And the first thing I noticed was how physically demanding it was yeah. as we were just rehearsing tons of props, tons of energy expended, just throwing things. And oh, I we, we touched on this in the past, yeah. but like I didn't actually yell right for most of it. Like right. I would yell for the run throughs. I would yell for the table read. I would yell when we were shooting, but all the rehearsals and all that kind of stuff, I would just kind of mime it. Right. Or mime it quietly. Right. I'm stuck in a loud. <laughs> right. But um, so after, and I'd be sweaty in a mess anyway, like yeah. throwing this prop and right. screaming and Jumping throwing into... people out of the library. Yeah, exactly. And then you add the um, screaming on top of that. It's just exhausting. Yeah. And one of the first things that I 
tried to do, which doesn't really come. It, it's a catch 22 <laughs> because I wanted to make the distinction. I thought it was important to make the distinction between her being loud and her being mean. Oh, but she does all these horrible things to people. Yeah. Like a lot of horrible things. Yeah. Like things that would put you in jail <laughs> if you weren't in an all that sketch. Right. Throwing people out and yelling in their faces right. and kicking them to the floor and throwing shit at them. And, <laughs> you know, just, it's all really crazy. So she ends up just kind of being mean. Yeah. Scary. Well, I don't know. I, I felt like every time I have always watched loud librarian it it definitely feels like she's writing that very fine line of mean or is she just overdoing her job because all it's not like she's looking at people and going you're a horrible person yes she's looking at people that are going like excuse me and then she's like yelling at him stop talking this is a library, blah, 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 blah. not a whisper tick so it always felt to me not that she was mean but she was just so passionate passionate about doing her job yes that, yes it turns into her throwing kicking kids out and doing all this stuff and yeah they would think that she's mean from a but from an outside perspective it really never, it never came off to me as a mean character, as just an overzealous yes. character that was really excited about doing her job. And if you watch most of the um, sketches, yeah. the other kids, like the, you know, the other cast members that are playing the kids. Most often Kel, I feel. Most often Kel. <laughs> he was always in there. <laughs> God, he hated that loud librarian. He loved the library. <laughs> But most of the kids kind of reacted to the loud librarian like, she's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and every once in a while when I was literally chasing somebody out of the door with a hammer, <laughs> they would act scared and scurry away. Right. But um, I'm surprised the PTA let that go on so long. <laughs> but so it was um, very difficult just physically, it's a difficult sketch. When I was in Orlando doing it, I would come in at night yeah. when there was no rehearsal and work with my props. Mm. During the day there, I had to be in other sketches. Yeah. I didn't really have a lot of time. Yeah. And so it was it was fun and it is cathartic to get to fucking kick shit and yeah. throw shit. But um yeah, it's really uh takes a lot of energy. Can we talk for two seconds about air horns? Yes, Because I feel like I came, remember I, so uh, the the new cast, the new group yes. of kids that just started the new season of all that a year or so, two ago, um, I came with you to the first rehearsal day uh, of the first episode and they wanted to do a loud librarian. Yeah. And I was there and you were doing it with all the kids, but it was so cute to me because it felt like out of all the characters that you did, Loud Librarian was so your character. Yeah. And it was such a character that other people couldn't do. Like you did um, uh, the teacher. Sorry, no, not the teacher. The with the quotes. A vital information. Vital information. You did vital information and you were amazing at it. Uh, and then Danny took over mm -hmm. and he did a good job of it. And then it was really cute when I went to that rehearsal nice. day, how you were able to kind of pass the torch, literally passing the 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 seat yes. to the new person. And it was such a cool little like, oh, it's the old school handing it off to the new school. Yep. And now she can take it over and play that character. And it was so fun. But then you got to the loud librarian and it wasn't like the loud librarian had a new like niece librarian that was there to like take over <laughs> yeah it right? was just a new episode of loud librarian yeah. with new kids in the library yeah i had a whole new generation of kids to just scream at it just felt like you know vital information they could replace you yeah. this is fingerly they could replace you but for the loud librarian there is just no replacing Lori beth <laughs> they denberg just, they retired her jersey <laughs> Like, yeah. I thought that was really cute. It is. It's uh, It's very, yes, it's very singular to me. <laughs> it is. If anyone else tries to take it, <laughs> I'll chase you out of the library. But I do think there's something, there's an element to it of if somebody else did it, I think it might come off as mean. 
But for the way that you were doing yeah. it, it was like, oh, she's just loving her job. <laughs> and it makes it a little cuter to watch. It, yeah, it was fun. And then as you, as the as we've said before, any character and all that, it's the character, it's the character, and then they go crazy. Right. Because you have to keep topping yourself. Right. So, you know, in the beginning... It was, you know, started just yelling and I was talking on the phone and stuff. And then as it progressed, let's take the sheet off these, dr this drum kit. Yeah, exactly. You know, let's take the sheet off this, you know, ninja that I'm going to have a karate fight with. <laughs> right. But um, You've mold it had to be bigger library. and bigger and bigger. So yeah. there were all this crazy stuff. Yeah. The motorcycle. Yeah. Just crazy mower. stuff. And what I do like about the loud librarian or how I portray it. See, this seems douchey. Like, yeah, am I, I like, when I got into the character, <laughs> is that when she's not yelling at people to be quiet, yeah. she's really excited and positive. Yeah, that's so true. You know, like, she's just like, I want a contest. <laughs> or like, I can't wait to see the blah, blah, blah. Right. She's really happy and excited. It's true. And then just switches if somebody goes like, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but we what you said before, what we didn't follow through with oh. was can we talk about air horns? Air horns, yes, please. Here's the story, guys. Okay. The air horn was a staple. Yeah. It is. She's not dead. <laughs> um, can you imagine a loud librarian movie? That oh, would be no. old in four seconds. Can you imagine a loud librarian funeral? Oh, dude. That would be amazing. Like she's performing the funeral or it's her funeral? <laughs> no, it's her funeral, but somehow she recorded a video message to be played <laughs> at her funeral. Got it. Uh, so the, but the air horn was a staple of one of the loud things. Yeah. Back in the original All That Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not get it to work. I Ever. could not... I don't think I ever once really got it to work. Well, you got it to spray out yes, smoke, it, it but would it wouldn't make, make a burp, burp, burp. No, it wouldn't do the big sound. It would make the kind of a stuttery noise, and then this, like, smoke would come out. <laughs> exactly. Which is whatever, you know. Right, the compressed air yeah, or exactly. whatever. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't, like, on fire. <laughs> Which ended up being funny, too, because, and they would put in, most right. of the time, an air horn right. noise. Burr, burr, burr. But for whatever reason, I could never get it to work when, so we were, when we were filming. Yeah. It was just like the bane of my existence. <laughs> but I think that was a good thing. Okay. Because when we came back to do... The with the new cast, yeah. the reboot, yeah. the continuation. Yeah. And I was doing the loud librarian. I had an air horn. Yeah. And they were like, so you just do this and and we'll put in, you just fake it and we'll put in the sound. Right. And I'm like, are you sure? And I said, well, can we try it? And uh, this was just a couple people on this, the director and mm. the, um, you know, oh, there's a whole little group of people. Right, that make, producers. Yeah, and, that yeah. are on the floor that just make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, well, yeah, let's just try it. And I, you know, I really, I have a loud voice. <laughs> oh, I have another funny story. Okay. I have a loud voice. So I just yelled out, you know, like, watch your ears, air phone, you know, air, air, air yeah. porn to prepare everybody. And then I hit it. It was so fucking loud. Oh, no. Like, I guess in the last 20 years, air, <laughs> air horn technology, technology has just like skyrocketed. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And I was like, OK, we're not doing that. Then. Oh, my God. But what was really funny, it was a week of the the new ones, okay. with the new kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had done a librarian sketch. Yeah. And then we I was waiting to just like. They were doing other sketches and I was just waiting. Like there's places where people sit backstage and like there's monitors to watch. Right, right, right. And there was a group of extras mm. who just were talking mm. and this is while we're filming and stuff. And you mm. don't fucking do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I especially, I love efficient production. I don't stand for that. Yeah. And there are these kids and we're like, shh, you know, and a mom of one of the cast members is there saying quiet, you know, yeah. and then I'm there going like, you know, guys, you need to be quiet. Yeah. And I realize that means nothing from me now. <laughs> that it's like I'm making a joke right. going, shh, quiet. <laughs> exactly. I wasn't doing it loudly, but <laughs> like, 
you know, like, oh, what does that mean? Oh, quiet. Get, I get it, girl. They were all like, <laughs> right. oh, like I was in on the joke with them when really I was like, shut, shut up. up. I can't tell you to shut the fuck up because you're kids and we're on Nickelodeon set. But that was that was really the funny. I was like, you oh know, God. the 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 girl who cried quiet. <laughs> When I really need people to be quiet, they're not going to believe me. Yeah, exactly. That's the consequence. <laughs> and I do like there's, I mean, not that they get it. It's one of those things that I think, you know, it's just funny to see this, you know, when you're a kid, this late lady yelling yeah. and it's the library and you know what a library is yeah. and look at all the crazy stuff. But I just love that if they didn't get it then that they're like growing up and going like, I appreciate the irony. <laughs> So I do love the loud librarian. Hopefully we'll see her again. Yeah. We should release an album or something. Oh my God. Uh, of Sounds just, of the loud death librarian. Metal. Yeah, exactly. Death metal in one ballad. <laughs> but every song is about being quiet. Yeah. It's like Beatles in love. It's like every single song <laughs> about being quiet. Uh, so the loud librarian lives on in all of our hearts Yay. and in my sweaty and exhausted past. <laughs> and that was a very good character assassination. Thank you so much. That was lovely. Um, let's move on though. We have one more question for today's podcast. Uh, and it is from a young lady by the name of Millie. 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 And Millie writes us, I'm moving to a new city, looking to start a new adventure. My issue is that I haven't gotten vaccinated yet for COVID. Oh. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I've had some complicated health issues that have me worried about getting it. I do, however, mask up and social distance. Prior to my move, I've limited my interactions to a small number of close family and friends, most who are vaccinated. When I've been honest about my vaccine status, I've lost friends, though, and have received harsh criticism. So I doubt I'd want to share that status with new friends in a new city. I mean, I'd be honest if I asked, if asked, but I wouldn't volunteer that info if I can help it. Am I doomed to be alone forever? Oh my. Millie. Millie. Ay, Dios mío. Yeah. Well, as anyone who's listened to this podcast knows, I am pro covid yeah. as far as it exists <laughs> yes i am pro vaccination yeah. i am pro mask yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. and i'm not even pro i hate fucking having to wear my mask of course all over. of I, course I, you it's do a bummer it's a know? shitty thing to have to do how many times have i gotten to the door of where i'm going and gone fuck, fuck i, need a I mask. have to get a mask you know so i don't want you to think that i'm like oh i'm in love with it right. this is my favorite pandemic ever right you know but I I do believe that those things are necessary. Those things yeah. are what I choose to do to be a responsible, caring member of society. That's right. X, Y, Z. Right. So, Millie. Yeah. I totally get your situation. I want to make sure, which I guess I'm just telling you to do it if you haven't, <laughs> report back to me next week, <laughs> that you have consulted with more than one doctor yeah. to see what are the side effects? Is this safe for me? There are definitely people who cannot get vaccinated. Yes. Who cannot. Yes. Not who choose not to. Right. Not who don't believe it. Right. Not that don't want a chip in their brain like I have. <laughs> hey, I blocked out for a second. What happened? Make sure. Do more research. Talk to your doctor. Because she says, I think she says she's worried about it. Yeah. Did she say her doctor said? No, she does not. That okay. is exactly what I got out of it, too is that it does feel like it's more about uh, her being I, worried. Yeah, she has complicated health issues that have me worried about getting it. Okay, so if you really need to uh, speak with uh, one doctor, two doctors, if you have a specialist, right. if you have these specific health things. Right. Because you're, this is really affecting your life. Yeah. I mean, your end to this is like, will I always be alone? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's... That's a problem and for you to be carrying without the actual answer. Right. So you too sweet, get yourself, get yourself to a doctor. I mean, for your own safety and well-being and the well-being of people around you, find out. Yeah. 
what will happen. There's research done. Yeah. What would happen if this happened? Is is the one vaccine more better, more better more for better. you <laughs> than the other one based yeah. on what your health problems are? Because there's information out there about that. But get it from your doc. Don't read, you know, Reddit and then watch YouTube. Or or just join up with a bunch of anti-vaxxers in your new city. Hey, there you go. It's probably a top-notch group of people. I'm, I hear they like to make America great again, too. They, some, well, that's not all of them, but yes. <laughs> it's easy to paint them all with that brush, which I do constantly, yep. and I'm acting like I'm the voice of reason right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, girl, you got to figure out, you got to find out. Yeah. If you can get this. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, oh, whatever's going on with you, you wait and see. Do I have the reaction? Do I whatever? And that's scary. Yeah. But find out if you can, yeah. if it's advisable, and if it's not, get the specifics. Mm -hmm. Because now there's tons of places where Clark was just telling me about his gym yeah. where yeah. you have to bring your vaccine proof of vaccination. Proof of vaccination. I would assume that there is some sort of proof of can't vaccination. Exactly. And if that's the case that you cannot be vaccinated, you need to get that. Yes. It might not change people's minds. Mm -hmm. It might, you know, like, oh, we don't want you here. But at least you won't be tarred with this brush like Clark and I do to <laughs> everyone else who, who hasn't been vaccinated. It's true. Millie? Good luck. Good luck. I really, uh, I, I hope everything goes well, and I hope you don't have to be alone forever. Yeah. Um. But that was it. That was uh, our oh, final okay. question of the day. So gotcha. we are done, 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 Um. Uh, if you guys out there listening to us, if you have a question or if you have a decision that's weighing heavily on you, please send it to us and, and let LB ease your burden. Send us your problems at AskLoriBeth.com. You can follow us on all the socials at AskLoriBeth or just leave us a message with your voice at 1-855-336-2374. That's 1-855-DENBERG or 1-855-DENBERG. And you can find me at LB Denberg on Instagram at Lori Beth Denberg on Twitter yep. and at the Lori Beth Denberg fan page on Facebook and Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. Give us your Christmas questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to book me as a gift for a loved one. You can do so for a personalized video at cameo.com slash Lori Beth. I'm sure you have tons of fun uh, New Year's Eve content to share to people, right? They yeah. can book you for a New Year's Eve video. You can book me. You can count down for people. Oh, oh that's a great idea. Dude, that should cameo you and have you literally do a, a one minute countdown to New Year's. If you call me, I will drop your balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. And bye. Goodbye, bubs. That Advice stars Lori Beth Denberg and Clark Crozier. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Balin, and part of the Seltzer Kings Network. Our theme song is written and performed by Natty Ward. If you or someone you love is in need of some bad advice, you can submit your own question on our socials, all of which are Ask Lori Beth, or on our website at AskLoriBeth.com, or for a nostalgic twist, you can call 1-855-DENBERG. That's right, 1-855-336-2374, and leave your question there. Thanks for listening.